In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. My dear friend, I'm sure you're well. It is Sunday, and today we celebrate the 18th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our first reading is taken from Exodus chapter 16, verses 2 to 4, then 12 to 15. Our responsorial psalm is taken from Psalm 78, verses Psalm 78. Yes, I need to confirm that because it is important. Yes, Psalm 78, verses 3 to 4, 23 to 24, 24, 25, then verse 54. Our second reading is taken from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 17, then 20 to 24. And our gospel passage is taken from John, chapter 6, verses 24 to 35. In the second of the gospel readings taken from John 6, at this stage of year B, we find ourselves at the beginning of Jesus' long discourse on the bread of life. The first reading from the book of Exodus provides an appropriate background describing as it does the gift of bread from heaven with which God fed the Israelites in the desert. Some aspect of the manna tradition not mentioned in this first reading are important for understanding the way it provides a background for the gospel. The manna came down from heaven on the first six days of the week. But on the seventh day, the Sabbath, the manna that fell on the first five days became unedible after that day. But that which fell on the sixth day did last overnight by preserving some of the some for tomorrow. The Israelites were able to eat and still keep the Sabbath rest. In the later Jewish tradition, the provision of the manna was seen as one of Moses' great feats. Feats and in the wisdom tradition, the life-giving bread from heaven became a symbol of the gift of the Torah. That is the law of Moses. Jesus' interaction with the crowd in the gospel plays off these traditions. Following the miraculous feeding, the people had wanted to make Jesus their king, but he eluded them and went off to the hills by himself, while his disciples set out to cross the lake by boat. Later, in verses 16 to 21, in a manifestation of his divine status, he rejoined them by walking upon the sea. Eventually, the crowds whom Jesus had fed by multiplying the loaves catch up with him again on the other side of the lake and begin the dialogue with him that triggers the discourse. They ask questions of Jesus that betray inadequate understanding of his person and his activity. Jesus takes up their questions and responses, correcting them and turning them in a direction that leads to mature faith and readiness to receive revelation. He points out that they have been looking for him simply because they had been fed, albeit marvelously. 
with what was still ordinary food, they had failed to see signs in the sense that they did not understand the gift of ordinary bread as a sign of orsebo pointing to a deeper reality. That Jesus is the gift of bread sent down from heaven to satisfy a far deeper human need, the gift of eternal life. By following the way of the law, they are working in the sense of working for money in order to have the wherewithal to buy bread to keep them alive. But such bread is like the bread the Israelites went out to collect on the first five days. Bread that would not last. Instead, they should understand that in the presence of Jesus, they are really in a Sabbath situation where the manna sent down on the sixth day is bread that truly lasts, lasts for eternal life. The Son of Man, Jesus, will give. The writer has the future um, the, the, that, the, that the Son of Man will give. A seal affixed to a document authoritatively stamps the document with the author's identity and uh, ownership. The seal that the Father has set upon Jesus, this is verse 27, probably refers to his endowment with the Spirit. An episode not described in the fourth gospel but alluded to by John the Baptist in chapter 1 verses 32 to 34. Endowment with the Spirit provides divine accreditation and guarantees that the revelation given by Jesus is the food that endures to eternal life. The only work then that is required on the human side is the work of believing that such is the case, namely that in the person of Jesus, God is setting down from heaven the bread of life in this imperishable and life-giving sense. Unconvinced, the crowds want Jesus to turn on a manna-like miracle as they believe Moses did. This is verse 430. Jesus corrects them in regard to both past and present. It was not Moses, but God who gave them bread from heaven. Likewise, they should not now be expecting him to provide bread from heaven as if he was simply a figure comparable to Moses. What Moses provided was the law, which was not bread from heaven that would last or endure to eternal life. Whereas he, Jesus, is the bread from heaven that the Father is now providing for the life of the world. If the crowd can simply put aside its own presuppositions and demands and simply believe in the generosity of God, then they will receive this life-giving revelation, both as revelatory word of God and Eucharist Jesus is for us the bread of life. Thank you. Today we are on day 36 in our family deliverance novena. So we are coming to the end of this novena and I thank God for that. Let us pray. 
faithful Father and our God in heaven, I come to you this Sunday morning with a prayer for the believers and unbelievers. Where I have planted seeds in the work of the gospel, dear Lord, I pray that you will send more workers to water the seeds, opening the minds and hearts of those who have heard the gospel. Your word tells us in Matthew 9.37, Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. I pray today that you will send many workers to continue the ministry throughout the world where the gospel is being preached. May these believers be people who love you deeply and committed to helping others grow in their faith. Matthew 9.38 We did. Therefore, Pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. Lord, where financial seeds have been planted, multiply the seeds so that the power of the seed grows and spreads to, gr to bring an abundant harvest. I ask that all money that has been sown into ministries is effectively used to make the most impact in the communities. Where seeds of time and service have been sown, I pray that those seeds enter the hearts of the lost to quicken them to salvation. And back to the house of the Father, I ask for a mighty move of the Holy Spirit in each person who has been ministered to. May their salvation be multiplied by all they come into contact with. May these believers see the beauty and truth of your word and be transformed by its message. May they be inspired to share your love and make a positive difference in the communities. I pray that you will also be with me and help me continue planting seeds of faith wherever I go. May your message be heard and received by those who need it most. And may your love be known and be felt by all who seek it. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your compassion. Thank you for your forgiveness. I trust in your perfect timing and divine plan. And I look forward to seeing how you will work in the lives of those around me and those especially who do not know you. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. My dear friend, I remain your priest and servant, Father C.K., wishing you a productive Sunday.